<sighs> Halloween, where kids go trick or treating and parents hastily schedule dentist appointments the very next morning. It's been a while since I've done anything big to celebrate, but thankfully I've already got the best possible Halloween related video ready to go. Thanks for helping me with my costume, by the way, Microsoft. You're welcome. Now all I need to do is film the video. So let me just pull the script up here and... Ah! <sighs> well, this is just great. The one time where I'm actually prepared to do a Halloween special and I sleep through Halloween. <sighs> I'm sick of making mistakes. Can't I just do something right for once? Screw it. I'm making this a Thanksgiving special. Gobble, gobble. Let's go. You ever notice how some video games are best meant to be played at certain times of the year? Well, I don't know about you, but Spooky Month just wouldn't be complete without some Luigi's Mansion action. Yeah, nothing screams Halloween like traveling around a haunted mansion, catching ghosts, solving puzzles, and rarely ever being released in or around the same time as Halloween. The Mario franchise is known for its ensemble cast of quirky and lovable characters, and Luigi has always been one of my personal favorites, which is partly why I have such a big soft spot for the Luigi's Mansion series. I even did a review of the original game for my very first Halloween special four years ago, and to this day, I still consider it to be a classic. Not the video, I, I think it's pretty terrible. Then we have the sequel, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, a game I probably would have reviewed by now if I had a 3DS capture device to record my own footage with. I haven't played this one a whole lot, but from what I can tell, it's not considered to be widely popular among fans. I'm not completely sure why that is. I just know that apparently I'm not supposed to like it. I also know that it was made by Next Level Games, who I guess must have taken charge of the series going forward, seeing as how they've come back to bring us Luigi's Mansion 3, which is technically the fifth game since there was also an arcade game and a 3DS port that everyone seemed to forget about. I still find it weird that they didn't just pull a No More Heroes and port the first two games to the Switch before the third one came out, but Eh, Nintendo re-releasing older titles in ways that don't really make a lot of sense is something we should be used to by now. But let's finally dig into this game and see what's terrorizing Yal's neighborhood. Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and a group of nameless toads have been invited to stay at a hotel called The Last Resort. So it wouldn't really be appropriate to call this game Luigi's Mansion since it takes place in a hotel, but I guess calling it Hotel Mario 2 Electric Spookaloo wouldn't have been good from a business standpoint. The hotel is run by a woman named Helen Gravely, who quickly escorts our Mushroom Kingdom residents to their rooms. Night night. Night night. Someone call a doctor cause my heart just melted. Later that night, Luigi is awoken by the sound of Peach screaming. After going out to investigate, he soon discovers that she, the Toads, and even Mario have been trapped in paintings by none other than King Frickin Boo. Gravely, it turns out, is a King Boo fangirl and used the hotel to help lure Luigi and his friends into a trap where King Boo could exact his revenge. Gee, who would have thought a character that has the word hell in their name and looks like a purple bride of Frankenstein with the temperament of a wet cat could possibly be a villain? In all fairness, I really do like this character a lot. She has a great design and a commanding presence that I think makes her a legitimately threatening bad guy. Though, at the same time, I feel like she could have been given a slightly bigger role. Like, maybe instead of King Boo taking advantage of her loyalty and having her do his bidding, Gravely could use him as a puppet, like what King Boo did to Bowser in the original game. That would also tie into her obsession with King Boo, loving him so much that she'd essentially try to become him. Can you imagine being so obsessed with a person that you wanted to try to be more like them? <sighs> That's just sick. But anyway, after managing to escape from King Boo for the time being, 
Luigi reunites with his ghostly canine pal Polterpup, who points him into the direction of a brand spankin' new Poltergust G00. Later, he comes across Professor E. Gad, also trapped in a painting, and once he gets him out, the two of them make their way to E. Gad's laboratory. It's here where the professor reveals that he was also lured to the hotel by Helen Gravely, but then had his collection of ghosts stolen, which included King Boo. Now all the ghosts are roaming around the hotel, and it's up to Luigi to go from floor to floor to suck them all up and save his friends from their wood-framed prisons. Mario games don't always go down hard with storytelling Christopher Nolan style, and this game is no different. But the story's there to serve a purpose, it gets the job done, and the way it's presented? God damn is it charming! The character animation is among the best any Mario game has ever had. I swear, it's close to Warner Brothers levels at least. The model quality is top-notch. The amount of expressions they get out of these models is jaw-dropping. Even the small things, like how Luigi's animations change depending on how calm or freaked out he gets. How he looks like he's doing a jig when he's sidestepping. And how they animate Egad's mouth to sync up with the noises he makes. I don't think a Mario game has ever had this much effort be put into the presentation. Luigi's Mansion 3 obviously looks wonderful, graphically speaking, but I love how the music in the opening changes based on which characters you're talking to. I love how the title screen looks all shiny and pristine at the start, but then becomes dark and gloomy once the ghosts take over. I love how Next Level Games cheekily sneaks in references and callbacks to some of their other games like Punch-Out! and Mario Strikers. By the way, Next Level, please make another Mario Strikers. I love the little interactions Luigi has with his friends on the overworld. That toad just got stuck behind the table, and that one legitimately just killed himself. Egad, what the hell are you doing? There's clearly a lot to talk about with the attention to detail on display here, but on the audio side, this game might have also given us Charles Martinet's finest performance as Luigi. I don't think he gets nearly enough credit for the work he's put in over the past 30 years. It's not just getting up in front of a microphone and going, Whoa! For what little dialogue there is, Charles breathes so much life into his characters, and it really shines here. Somebody needs to give this guy an award or something. Oh. Well, that'll do. Alright, I think I've gone on about the presentation long enough. It's time we moved on to the gameplay. So, after the second game followed more of a mission-based structure, Luigi's Mansion 3 goes back to how it was in the original, where you only had one mansion to go through, or in this case, a hotel. But some elements of Dark Moon are also brought back, like the rainbow bulb, which is used to reveal hidden objects and release things from within paintings, and the straw bulb, which can be charged up to release a bigger flash that keeps ghosts stunned longer, and can potentially make your friends go blind if you mess around with it for too long. The game is broken up into sections, each one taking place on a different floor of the hotel. In order to get to each floor, you have to retrieve an elevator button related to that floor after defeating a boss ghost, and then place the button back in the elevator panel. Floors are not only dimensionally transcendental, like the TARDIS, but within another TARDIS, which has actually happened before, Doctor Who is weird, but they also have their own unique theme. Egyptian tombs, a medieval castle, a pirate's bay, and my absolute favorite, the movie studio. I think I've spent the most time here because the aesthetic really appeals to me, and there's just so much creativity going on here. I love how the movie sets are all in front of blue screens, but then by looking through the camera, you see what the backgrounds are supposed to look like, and solving puzzles by traveling between sets, taking things from one location to another, and using them to interact with the scenery in different ways is very intuitive and fun. Ah, crap. You see what I mean? I've been here so long that my controller almost died on me. This is also where my favorite boss fight in the whole game takes place. Luigi takes part in a kaiju film being directed by this ghost named Morty, but you don't fight him, you square off against a ghost in a monster suit on a miniature city set. As somebody with a deep, burning passion for the art of filmmaking, in particular practical effects, this is just fantastic. And Morty doesn't care who you are or what you're trying to do, he's just a troubled filmmaker who wants to make a masterpiece. Then by the time the fight is over, Morty is so satisfied with the footage that he lets us take the elevator button and secludes himself in the editing room to put his movie together. But let's capture him anyway. 
<laughs> I got an achievement for that? <sighs> Man, that's like if John Wilkes Booth was awarded the Medal of Freedom for shooting Abraham Lincoln. What an odd thing to say. Eh, I tried. Well, moving on. Once again, you'll need to use your trusty and somewhat dusty poltergust to suck up ghosts, but not every ghost can be captured in the exact same way. Some of them will have different accessories that make catching them a little bit more involving. Like if a ghost is wearing sunglasses, you'll have to vacuum them up so that the ghost won't have anything to protect its eyes from being blinded by your flashlight. You can also slam ghosts into other ghosts to decrease their health and make them easier to catch. Not to mention, it's pretty satisfying. Smash, smash, smash! If you're traveling with a buddy, you can also use the poltergust to suck them up and fire them at certain spots to do something like break open a glass case, or send them flying off into space! Ooh, look! A giant fan! Sorry, Toad, but the urge is too strong. Goodbye, buddy! Say hi to the others for me! Well, that was slightly disappointing. The Poltergust also has something called a suction shot, which is basically a plunger that latches onto things and lets you pull them. So you can use it to smash up furniture or move obstacles out of the way to uncover hidden passages. Later, by plugging the vacuum into a glowing outlet, you can use the super suction shot and suck up just about everything, including walls. Now I don't know what sucks more, the vacuum or the jets? You know, if I was a talking bear voiced by Frank Oz, this would be hilarious. The poltergust can be used for other non-ghostbusting related purposes, like riding on a floating duck, finding secret gems, or collecting money. Except when gold bars decide to yeet themselves out of existence. But your moveset isn't completely vacuum-based. Luigi himself comes equipped with plenty of other tools. Pressing the ZL and ZR buttons together causes him to perform a new burst move, which involves jumping up into the air and somehow producing puffs of smoke from beneath you. This is good for hopping over carpet bumps, knocking stuff over, and getting hordes of ghosts off your back. I've yet to mention, though, that Luigi isn't going at it alone for this adventure. Next Level must have taken a note from Insomniac Games and decided to have functions be mapped to every button on the controller possible. So by pressing down on the right stick, Luigi can summon his gelatinous counterpart, Gooigi, from this little canister on the back of the poltergust. You may have been led to believe that this is where Gooigi was introduced, but he actually made his first appearance, through some time travel shenanigans on EGAD's part, in the 3DS port of the original Luigi's Mansion. Still forgot about that? I don't blame you. Luigi and Gooigi share the same moveset, and you can switch control between them wherever and whenever you want. The advantage of playing as Gooigi is that he's capable of slipping through bars and grates and going through tubes, so you can use him to reach areas that the real Luigi wouldn't be able to get to on his own. The only problem is, he's not water resistant. He immediately melts and returns to your vacuum whenever he gets in contact with water. He also drops whatever item he's carrying, like keys or elevator buttons, when he disappears, so the item doesn't automatically go to Luigi. Not the most annoying thing in the world, but having to go and get it again can be a little irksome here and there. What never gets old is having to solve puzzles with these two. There will be times where Luigi and Gooigi have to work together to reach further parts of the section and uncover some hidden secrets. You could even use Gooigi as a decoy to lure ghosts to him and give you a better chance at catching them. From what I've played of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, I recall it being extremely heavy on the puzzle solving. While I wasn't against the approach, the amount of puzzles there were to solve and the means of finding the solutions could be kind of exhausting at points. Luigi's Mansion 3 does away with this issue by striking a better balance between puzzle solving and exploration, and by incorporating new gameplay concepts and taking full advantage of them. Luigi is a prime example of that, and I love him. You think he'd get scared by a ghost as easily as the real Luigi? Of course not, he's like a dog. He doesn't understand human problems or human emotions. And in keeping with the series tradition of taking Nintendo hardware and using it as an in-game mechanic, like we saw with the Game Boy Horror and the Dual Scream, Luigi's Mansion 3 introduces... the Virtual Boo. 
It's a state-of-the-art virtual reality device fitted with a fancy red screen. Really cutting-edge stuff, and red is all the rage, you know. Just wait until I finish the marketing materials on this. It'll fly off the shelves! Someone's been drinking too much. The Virtual Boo allows you to look at the map, check all the floors you've unlocked, and call Professor Egad at any time. It also shows your current objective, so if and or when you should ever get lost, the game will remind you of what you need to do. These clunky red goggles even act as a means of sending you back to Egad's lab from wherever you are in the hotel, and here you can listen to the game's soundtrack or use the money you've collected to purchase things from the shopping network, like gold bones that revive you after you lose all your health, and cartridges that can locate gems and booze on your map. Yep, the booze are back in town, and as usual, catching them serves as one of the game's biggest sources of difficulty. I don't know if it's just me though, but I actually found catching the booze to be pretty easy this time, at least when compared to the first game. I remember how they used to be so quick to escape and move to other rooms, which would suck if it was a room you couldn't get to yet. Here, they only show up after you clear a floor, and they stay on that floor once you find them. All the doors are unlocked too, so it's not too hard to reach them when they move to a new spot. What else makes them easier to catch is that all you have to do is stun them with your dark light, suck up their tongues, and then slam them repeatedly. But you'll only know where a boo is by watching your poltergust shake and feeling your controller vibrate. This is where I would start to struggle, cause I'm just not that good at recognizing these speeds. For me, the boo radar in the first game had easier patterns to spot with how the light would change color. Then again, Catching all the boos in the first game doesn't give you a flashlight with a boo face in the bulb. Yeah, this game wins. That's quite an accomplishment. If Luigi's Mansion 3 is able to make even the process of catching boos slightly less tedious than it was before, it's doing something right. I even look forward to the boss fights. There's so much variety to them. No two bosses are exactly the same. Some can be a breeze, while others are a little trickier, but they're never too easy or too hard, and I like how each fight sort of forces you to pay attention to their attack patterns. I admittedly did find the inclusion of a piano-playing ghost kind of funny, since we already had Melody in the original. Oh, oh, now I want to see a boss fight where they're having a dueling piano match like Daffy Duck and Donald Duck and Roger Rabbit. <laughs> That'd be so cool. But aside from the kaiju fight I mentioned before, I really got a kick out of the DJ ghost. This whole sequence feels like a tribute to 90s hip-hop. We got breakdancing ghosts doing the hammer time and... Well, it, at least there are no Fortnite dances. So, as you can imagine, I've had a pretty great time playing through Luigi's Mansion 3. But as enjoyable as my experience has been, it still wasn't without its fair share of setbacks. I'd consider the game's pacing, for example, to be damn near perfect if parts of it didn't feel so padded out. There aren't a whole lot, but things do happen over the course of the campaign that I feel only exist just to make the game longer and don't really serve that much else of a purpose. Cough cough, Polter Kitty. At two separate points in the game, this thing pops in and makes off with the elevator button for the next floor after you just got it like a minute ago. Man, I forgot how much I really didn't like these parts, because every time you catch her, she's always at a point where you could easily bring her health down to zero, but it always stops at one before she manages to escape. She also doesn't stay on the same floor, so you have to move to a different floor and keep chasing after her until she finally gives in and spits out the elevator button on your third attempt at catching her. You know, the first time this happens somewhere near the middle point, it's still not fun, but I can forgive the game for wanting to shake things up a bit. But when you're closer to the end, and then this stupid thing comes back for one last goose chase, that's when I start to feel bad for the people that had to put her down for her to even become a ghost in the first place. Well, I made it to the final floor, so at least I don't have to go chasing after her again. I've got other ghosts to worry about now. After Helen Gravely meets her sucky yuppie demise, Luigi frees Mario from his painting, and the two of them have a sweet little reunion. Mario then takes him to the roof of the hotel, where Princess Peach is being kept. Unfortunately for them, King Boo returns to trap them all inside of a giant painting, but thankfully, Polterpup pushes Luigi out of the way before he can be trapped as well. 
This leads to probably the hardest and most intense boss fight in the whole game, made even more intense when you get to the third phase, where you only have four minutes to defeat King Boo before it's too late. All that's missing is a clock tower, a lightning storm, and a faulty DeLorean. We already know time travel exists in this universe thanks to EGAD, so it would only make sense. I'm just saying. But of course, the day is saved, the hotel begins to crumble, and Luigi uses the dark light to set everyone free. With King Boo gone, the other ghosts he had under his control are turned back to normal, and the credits show them helping our heroes rebuild the hotel. Oh, I got a rank B hotel? No, yeah, I'll take it. Then a post credit scene shows the Mushroom Kingdomers saying goodbye to their new friends, loading onto the boogie bus, and riding off into the sunset. Huh. This is interesting. I think Luigi's Mansion 3 just turned out to be one of the best Mario games ever made? I mean, it's not perfect, it's got some things wrong with it. Look at that bat. It's literally a shadow of its former self. But I'm just amazed at how polished and tightly crafted this game is. And when comparing it to the other Luigi's Mansion games, honestly, this might even be my favorite. It sort of feels like a combination of the first two games, both in terms of gameplay and atmosphere. The tone makes for a perfect blend of the comedic nature of Dark Moon and the dark, creepy eeriness of the original. Not too goofy, but not too scary. Progression is more in line with the first game, and with the inclusion of mechanics and ideas that worked in the sequel, and a whole bunch of new stuff, on top of the masterful graphics and audio work, playing a Luigi's Mansion game has never looked, felt, or sounded this good. The multiplayer is especially fun. My friend Spirit was kind enough to join me for some scare scraper goodness. She has a YouTube channel as well, so go check her out. And let's just say plenty of laughs were to be had. Often at the other's expense. That said, here's the greatest hits from our time playing together. Hey! Let's go. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hi! Oh, help! <laughs> <laughs> Hi! I could, for my end, you just look like you're just sitting there miserably. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, this is my life now. Yeah, pretty much. I'm right here. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm trapped in a rug. Oh. How do you keep getting stuck in doors? I don't know. I thought we had a plan. What plan? A plan that specifically involved you not getting stuck in doors. Uh. If you if we can get through this one floor without you getting stuck in a door, that would be great. <laughs> now I'm stuck in the door. Oh uh. come on! <laughs> I You're kidding me! I no! Oh, no, okay. No! I'm sorry! No, no! No, you are not whacking my friend with a pool ball. Pool club! God damn it! I'm so glad I recorded this. <laughs> I don't know what else there is to say, guys. Luigi's Mansion 3 is just such an awesome game. It never moves too far away from what Mario's all about, but just goes far enough to avoid feeling like another typical Mario game. It's charming, it's inventive, it's full of memorable moments. I'm terrible at wrapping these up, so I'm just gonna tell you to play the game if you haven't already. Oh my. Someone's at the door and I'm leaving it in the video for some reason. It must be important. Evil Santa? What's going on here? Hello! Thanks for watching, everybody! And as always, I'd like to give a very special thank you to my superstar supporters on Patreon, Henry Newman, Jake Winans, and Rachel Rodriguez. If you'd like to support me as well, then please consider pledging to my Patreon page, or becoming a sponsor by clicking the Join button. You don't have to do these things if you don't want to, but the options are there, and I would really appreciate it if you, you know, if you gave them a look. Supporting me on Patreon can give you some neat benefits, like access to some exclusive content, Patreon exclusive videos and behind the scenes clips and all that, you get to read the scripts of my videos, you get to see the videos before they come out, and all that for as low as $1 a month. 
But if you want to go higher, then you might have the chance to pick whichever game I talk about for a future review. And you might also get some exclusive merch, like a Superstar Supporter sticker and a Superstar Supporter t-shirt. I don't really have much else to say here, so if you're still watching, let me just say I really appreciate you stopping by. And to those that have been watching my videos for long enough, thank you for sticking around. I love you guys to death, and I don't know where I'd be without you. I feel like I don't say that enough, but I really do mean it. You people mean the world to me, and I make these videos for you. So, I hope you get a kick out of them. Links to my social media and Discord server, as always, are in the description. And if you want to stay updated on my future uploads, be sure to click that notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and with that said, this is Mark, bidding you all a smashing farewell. There's noise in the background, but I'm keeping that in. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask if you decide to go out in public, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.